Why is the Pelicans' most used lineup playing so poorly? What if I told you it's almost by design? Plus, does the team need to at least consider trading BI this offseason? It's a Thursday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans at NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this Thursday. Going to take some of your questions in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all breaking down everything the good the bad that you want to know about this team asking some tough questions especially in today's show second segment we're not going to go deep on it right now but should the team consider trading one of Brandon Ingram or Zion Williamson let's say and we'll look at that but I want to look at oh and today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by the ultimate Basketball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NBA GM and managing your basketball franchise? This game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimategm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo code locked on all caps in the game. So let's get into this one. This came from the Athletic, their power rankings, where the Pelicans are 20th. And a couple of people sent me this article. So I'm treating it as like a listener question. And in there, they mentioned that the Pelicans' most used lineup, essentially their starting lineup right now at times, of C.J. McCollum, Trey Murphy, Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, and Jonas Valanciunas, which has played 142 minutes together, which isn't like actually that much at this point in the season, has a negative 20.6 net rating. Their offensive rating is 107.3. The defensive rating is 127.9. Both those numbers are bad. So what those two things measure, for those of you who don't know, is it looks at points scored and points allowed per 100 possessions. This kind of accounts and takes pace out of the equation. If a team plays fast, they take shots early on in the shot clock, they're generating more possessions, so therefore they have more opportunities to score points. Not that they're doing that, but they have more opportunities to score points, and there's very often a correlation between more possessions and points per game. But what if a team plays slow? They use up most of the shot clock trying to manufacture their favorite type of looks. Well, they have fewer chances to score. So oftentimes, their points per game are down. But they might actually have the better offense. So this kind of strings it out over 100 possessions. And it's the numbers that I use to look at to try and measure a team's offense and defense. It's worth noting they are team numbers. If you ever hear someone say a player's individual defensive rating, that's not a thing. It's the five-man, it's the team's defensive rating when he's out there on the court, not necessarily a factor of what he himself is doing defensively. So they have a minus 20.6 net rating. It's real bad. You want to be in championship contention. Your team needs to have a net rating of positive six. That starters, bench, and everyone included in that. So why is this lineup so bad? Because frankly, they shouldn't be. And... As I said in the open of today's show, I, you know, I think a little bit's almost by design and not like they're trying to intentionally be bad. One of the things we saw, especially against the Lakers, compared to the Portland game, is that with Brandon Ingram back in the lineup, CJ McCollum there, they, they play very isolation-heavy basketball with those two players. They're going out and they're just kind of doing their thing. There isn't a ton of off-ball movement. I don't want to say it's entirely by design because I don't quite think it's that, but that's kind of the goal of what they want to do. They want to put the ball in their best player's hands and let them work and cook. And at times it works and at times it doesn't and it's easy to defend. It's just, you know, what defense, what team are you going against? Is one of those guys having an off night or a really good night? The reason you see a lack of off ball movement with this, and this is the by design part, is because if Brandon Ingram's trying to isolate and just attack the basket or do something, get a mid-range shot, if you have someone cutting from the corners, cutting from the wing, setting a pick that he's kind of not ready for, even though he's setting up his defender for something, it pulls an extra defender in there. If he's going dribble, 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 and is about to attack the basket and another guy cuts, 
They're pulling a defender with them. And all of a sudden now it's harder for Brandon Ingram to score. So you try and kind of leave guys as anchors in the corners. Hope that that corner three, the short corner, where players tend to shoot better from than above the break threes, not always, but tend to, you know, since it's shorter, keeps a defender there and sucks someone out of the paint and pulls it away. This doesn't quite work with that lineup, though. You you have one good shooter out there right now in Trey Murphy the third. CJ's got court gravity, so say it's Brandon Ingram with the ball in his hands. You know, a defender might stick to Trey. They might stick to CJ, but they're not going to stick to Herb Jones. And depending on where Jonas Valanciunas is, they might not even stick to him. Yeah, he'll take some threes if he's at the top of the key that or the the top of the three point line. But his defender's nowhere near him. They're sagging off. They're doing their thing, just trying to make life harder for the Pelicans' other players. So. When you use this combination this way, it doesn't really work. If you're trying to play inside out, I think it can be a different story. Not saying you need to run the offense entirely through Jonas Valanciunas, but not parking him on the perimeter would be a good start. Letting him post up, trying, trying to make good entry passes to him, I think opens things up for everyone else. But they're kind of playing with an outside-in approach, and it just doesn't work with this. Herb Jones is finally starting to shoot well, shoot well, but he's definitely had a regression in terms of his offense and his three-point shooting, but they don't only just want him cutting just to cut because they're worried it could muck things up, and they're not necessarily wrong with that based on the offense that they're running right now. I think you could argue, don't do that with this group. We've seen they have better success when everyone's moving, when there's kind of more of a grand design than what they're doing right now. But that's not the reality of the situation. There was more of that last year, but you know they spent the summer, they spent the season kind of going with, in with a game plan of give it to Zion, let him do his thing. He's played 29 games. Let Brandon Ingram do his thing. You know, there's moments when he's going to go score and for, for, score, you know, 40 or whatever it might be. There's also games where he might struggle. And if he's still injured dealing with stuff, we've seen that affect him, which is partially why I think he doesn't play through some of these injuries and wants to sit out. And that's fine. And then it has kind of the effect on the defense, right? This is what I've regularly been saying. If you've been listening to my show for any period of time this season, and I'm going long this segment, this shouldn't be a shock. You know, your bad offense is leading to worse defense because they're out there playing in transition defense, being forced to defend fast breaks, and those are just efficient looks for every team in the league. So your bad offense doesn't let you get stops, which leads to more bad offense because you can't get out in transition and run. It's literally like the snake that eats itself here. And that's been the problem for the Pelicans. There's a way to break that. It's do, do more on offense, score more which is probably at this point too late to really do. Though, as I said in yesterday's show, they've got to make some changes now if they want to make the postseason because they're on the outside looking in. And I'll talk about Houston. They have two games coming up against them, four very winnable games. We'll talk about those a little bit more in the next, in the third segment um, and how it kind of equates to the Pelicans' preparation. But coming up next, we're going to lightly touch on this here. Lightly touch on this here. This is an off-season topic, and all y'all are asking me about this. This was regularly said when I said, what do you want to hear on the show? Trading Brandon Ingram or Zion Williamson. Let's look at that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by the ultimate pro basketball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NBA GM and managing your basketball franchise? Well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. Manage every uh, every strategic aspect of your team. You have to upgrade the facilities, hire coaches, sign guys in free agency, make your trades, develop your players. You're responsible for it all. All And it's all in this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want when you want to. I'm going to sneeze in the middle of doing this here. Or maybe... (laughs) Sorry, not... Oh, that was terrible. So... We're in a league with Locked On, and it's a lot of fun. We're talking trash. The Bulls have won back-to-back titles. My first three seasons, I made the playoffs. 
and then really fell off. Ended up with a couple of top draft picks, working our way back up, been upgrading our facilities to grow those guys even more. And so if you want to play Locked On Pelicans, listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probasketballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up in the app stores. That's probasketballgm.com. Ultimate Basketball GM, start your dynasty today. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down everything you want to know about this team. The good, the bad, asking some of the big questions, questioning the coaches, analyzing what's going on, and just having fun talking hoops with y'all here. So, for your second listen, Locked On Saints, by the way, Saints doing things. Free agency going a little wild, losing the entire D-line. I'm a little, I, I don't know what to make of this, and that's why I listen to Ross Jackson of Locked on Saints, breaking down everything black and gold to make sense of everything that's going on. Okay, so let's ask the question. Y'all, want, y'all wanted this, so I'm going to give it to you. Let me know in the comments down below. That's the requirement for me doing this segment right now. Y'all have to comment and tell me, do you think the team should trade Brandon Ingram, or Zion Williamson, one of the two. You're not going to trade both. And to be honest, I don't think that they would trade Zion Williamson. I think they'd look to trade Brandon Ingram first. I do think there is some frustration with the front office and with the players, even, about B.I. missing games. And you've heard me on this show talk about, you know, I don't really know how to discuss injuries because... I'm not B.I. I don't know what he's feeling. You know, they have to treat this as a business too. This is their livelihood and playing through pain or doing something that could damage your career maybe isn't the right move. So I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer to kind of him missing games or not playing unless he's 100%. But you hear a guy like Larry Nance Jr. say the other day after practice, you know, if I can go, I'm going to go. Even if I'm not going to be 100%, I'm going to give you everything that I've got. And those eight minutes he played over in Portland were were good. So you hear something like that. And I don't know if that's a shot at B.I. You can kind of read it as that. It's almost like he's subtweeting him in real life. But we've heard grumblings from the front, you know, from the front office and rumors and reports that, you know, they're a little bit frustrated with B.I. too. So I do wonder if they might consider trying to move him. I'm going to sneeze again. This is terrible. This is in the middle of the show. You hear me sniffling, trying to hold this off here. We're going to see how long I can, (laughs) how long I can go. So that's why I think they'd move B.I. over Zion Williamson. And so the question of should they do this is, and I'm cheating here, it depends. It depends on what your return would be. You're not going to trade him for four draft picks, three draft picks. You're not going to trade him four draft, four. You're not going to trade him and get draft picks in return. They're not trying to rebuild. They don't need more draft picks to go and draft guys and hope that they become good players like BI in three years or so. That's not the direction that this franchise is heading in. That's not the direction they're going to go. So if you're trading him, it's ideally for someone at his level or better, where you could include some picks in it potentially. And I don't know how many of those guys are readily going to be available. I'm not a big Carl Anthony Towns fan. You know, good player. Does he lead to winning? I'm not sure. He's got injury issues too. Maybe you could move Brandon Ingram for him. For him. I think that could be doable. You might need to include a pick. You know, could you get Bridges from Brooklyn for him? I'm not sure. I might do that one. But you're looking for probably a wing, right? Maybe? I'm not entirely sure. A score? That seems like you would need to trade him for a score. Are you going to find a score out there better than Brandon Ingram? I don't know that you are. But are you going to find a guy that's going to play more games than Brandon Ingram? I do think that could be the case. And that's something that the Pelicans are really going to have to think about this off season. And I think that's going to be questions asked by the front office in the, you know, their own internal meetings as they're kind of breaking down this past year in reviewing it all. I don't think there's an easy answer to it. And as like I said, it depends. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Should they trade Brandon Ingram? Are you frustrated with the amount of games that he's missed? Cause this is, you know, a multi-season thing. Missed a ton of games last year too. Um, but maybe it's their legitimate injuries, but it's tough to build and plan and do what you need to do and win games when your stars aren't available. And I just don't think Zion's going to be on the block whatsoever here. So I'm not sure which direction they go, but I don't think you're going to get the best return for Brady Ingram 
And are you downgrading your team, but adding consistency? And does that actually mean you're upgrading the team? These are the questions. These aren't easy, are they? Huh? This is going to be a big topic this off season, but I wanted to kind of throw that out there now because I wonder if that's getting kind of thought about by the people who end up making those decisions. So coming up next, the Pelicans have four very winnable games. And we looked at that the other day. And I said, the season's not over and it's not, even though it feels like it. But they need to take these teams seriously. They need to take the Houston Rockets very seriously because the Rockets are now on a two-game winning streak with wins over the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers. Thank you, Rockets, for one of those, both those. Let's talk about this up these, these next four games in the larger context of the Pelicans coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Built Bar. The Built Bar March Madness bracket is here. We know you have a favorite bar or puff, and now it's your time to make it count. I'm sneezing now. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. You know I'm going to be voting for the Brownie Batter Puff. That's my favorite one by far. And if that's your favorite, you can vote for that bar too. Support your bar or puff over at BuiltMarchMadness.com. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you're going to be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built Bars. Not only that, but one Locked On fan is going to win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars and puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. And you've got to try Built, the best protein bar ever. Seriously, they're so amazing you won't think they're good for you. What makes them so good, all high in protein, low in sugar, covered in 100% real chocolate. Run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March, so hop in and support your pick. Today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is also brought to you by FanDuel. I love FanDuel. It's the number one sports book in America and also the main sports book, the, the sports betting partner of Locked On. And new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from money line to points scored, three straight, and my favorite, the same game parlay. Trey Murphy to have... More than 15 points. Herb Jones to have more than five and a half rebounds. You combine them into one for an even bigger payout. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with Fanduel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down every single thing you want to know about this Pelicans team. We're available on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Tell a friend about the show. Number one thing you can do to support the, ch the show. I am so allergic in this room right now as I can like feel like I'm stuffy and you're hearing me and if it sounds terrible. But we still do the show regardless. So subscribe and comment down below on YouTube. So... We just went over the Brandon Ingram stuff. Let's move on to the kind of now. That's an off-season topic. And trust me, we're going to spend some time on that one. The Pelicans had a very deflating loss. That's probably putting it mildly against the Los Angeles Lakers. Now they have a four-game stretch that's going to define their season. As I've said, if you go 4-0, oh, things are okay. You know, when I put out what do people want to hear on the show, a number of y'all said hope which is a very valid question. And a lot, a lot of y'all also said, well, look towards next season because this season's done. It's not. It's not. In terms of the postseason, if you want them to win a title, to get to the conference finals, maybe even win a first-round series, like, no, that ship's probably sailed. Unless they get Zion back and look like a different team. But that ship has probably sailed. But if you want a couple of extra playoff games, if you want to see this team have a little bit of fun and see what they're capable of doing, if they can kind of grow a little bit, there's still plenty to play for. The Pelicans right now are a game and a half back of the seventh seed. They're okay. They're the 12th seed, but that's where they stand right now. So while you might think the season's over, no, it's not. You could potentially go 500 and still get into the play-in tournament. Beyond that, we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to say anything because I don't think there's much of a chance of that, but 
they have a very realistic shot at getting the seventh seed with some of the teams that they're playing. And you look at teams like the Dallas Mavericks, who just squeaked by barely the San Antonio Spurs, who are eliminated from playoff contention, along with the Houston Rockets. These teams have nothing to play for. Is Charlotte officially eliminated? No, but they're close. They're very close, too. So these next four games matter for New Orleans, and they know they're the better team. They know they're the better team. Are they going to act like it is the big question? Willie Green said he put them through a very long and rough practice after the Lakers lost to hopefully wake these guys up a little bit, and I think that was needed. That was important, but they're going to have to really respond. I'm going to sneeze again. I'm so sorry. This is like embarrassing as a professional podcaster here. So they have to respond. They need to find this within themselves. This is almost to the point where you need to have a players only meeting here to try and do something about this. These guys need to respond. I'm going to sneeze again. <laughs> the leaders of this team need to get these guys ready to go. CJ. B.I. needs to be a leader and step up in this. Larry is really one of those vocal, vocal guys. Billy Hernan and Gomez needs to pull people together. You need people ready for this because if you just walk into Houston thinking we're a way better team, they're going to beat you. They're going to beat you. Those young teams, even when they're eliminated from playoff contention, are hungry. And they just beat the Los Angeles Lakers, the same Lakers that destroyed the Pelicans just the other night. No, no Anthony Davis in that. They also just beat the Boston Celtics, too winning towards the end of the game there. This isn't going to be easy. The Spurs almost beat the Dallas Mavericks before they completely tanked that away. It almost was like intentional, it seemed like. So these games aren't going to be easy. The team needs to be ready to go. This is where we're going to really see the true test of this team. So I'm going to end the show before I sneeze again. Thank you all for listening. Sorry for this. We'll be back tomorrow. I have a great show for you. What role is best for C.J. McCollum with this Pelicans team right now. We're going to look at that in tomorrow's episode of Locked On Pelicans. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, and I'll see you all then.